Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And today we're talking about our picks for the five best beginner friendly rye whiskeys. Welcome back to the channel that brings real world content to the real world whiskey consumer. Today we're talking about our choices for what we think are the best five beginner friendly rye whiskeys. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, Aaron, how are you doing? And what are you drinking? I'm good. I'm good. I'm drinking a rye that we'll get into a little bit later. So I want to save it. Okay. I'm going to keep that under your hat. Keep it, keep okay. it to myself. Fair enough. How about you? What are you doing? How are, how are you doing? And what are you drinking? Well, I'm doing well. <laughs> and I am also drinking a rye to be discussed Ooh. a little bit later. Okay. So we'll get into both of those here in a minute. All right. Uh, but I know you're excited about this video topic because yeah. uh, if anybody has watched previous episodes, I'm certainly more the bourbon nerd in the house. Mm -hmm. I like that sweeter profile and rye whiskeys tend to be a little bit less sweet, mm -hmm. a little bit more. They, they can have a lot of different stuff going yeah. on. They can have they can be spicy. They can have like dill notes, pine notes. They're just not notes. as sweet, I think. Yeah. And I am I tend to like the less sweet of the things. Yeah, I, I don't say I have a sweet tooth. I say I just have a mouthful of sweet teeth. Yeah. And you certainly lean a little bit more to the non-sweet stuff. Yeah. So this is a list tailor-made for you. Yeah. There are a few products on here that I like. Yeah. And well, I think they're all great products. Yeah for the beginner yeah. rye whiskey fan. And I would say I am still kind of an advanced beginner. So I feel like this is pretty applicable because I drink all of these. Yeah. And I like all of these. Absolutely. So let's get let's into start, it. Let's start. Okay. Yeah. So the first one I'm picking is Bullet Rye. And the reason I'm picking this one is because this is what got me started with drinking rye to begin with. I think mm -hmm. it might've even been the second whiskey I'd ever had, oh, I really? believe, like by itself, me. Like I'd had yeah. stuff in like old fashions and stuff, but I had an Irish whiskey and then I had this. And so compared to an Irish whiskey, this this did kind of taste sweet, yeah, actually. But yeah, so this was like my go-to. This, it, 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 you know, it is a go-to, it's a good go-to, so. When we met, Bullet on Ice, Bullet on the Rocks, that was, that my, was, that was your move. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And I mean, I think this is a great first choice. First off, Bullet's marketing is on point. Yeah. It's a beautiful looking bottle. They don't make this whiskey. This whiskey is sourced from a, a distiller in Indiana called MGP, but they just, they make a lot of different stuff. This is a very typical rye recipe for them. Mm -hmm. And it is 90 proof. It's one of the lower proof beginner rye mm -hmm. options you will find. And it, it is a great intro to rye. Yeah, and it's also what I'm drinking. And as I'm smelling it now, like I'm getting a little bit of sweetness, but a little bit of pine almost either, a little yeah. bit, which it's good. And I think as far as our list goes, so for rye whiskey to be considered rye whiskey, it has to be made up of at least 51% of the rye grain in the recipe. Okay. And then after that, as long as it meets that threshold, that's the predominant characteristic of rye. It's mm. at least 51% rye. This is 95% rye. Oh, wow. It is the highest rye content we have on the on our list, but all that does, that doesn't necessarily mean one thing or the other, but if you find that you like this, you can look for other ryes mm. that have this 95% rye recipe or mash bill. You will probably like them as well. Mm. So. You really like bullet mm -hmm. when when every time I've ever tried bullet, it almost tastes if I drink it neat, it almost tastes a little cocktailish. Okay. But it is still very good by itself and it's great mixed into stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that is our predominant use for bullet rye. That's every time your we, predominant use for bullet rye. Yeah. You you'll drink it neat or on yeah. ice. If I'm drinking it and grabbing it, it's because I'm making a cocktail for yeah. us. I think that's a great first choice and it, Honestly, probably the best first stop for someone who is rye curious. Yep. All right. So All right, let's go to number two. Number two. And this is also kind of following my journey. My number two is Sazerac rye, the 90 proof. Um, this one to me tastes like sweet tea. Yeah. But been saying that because this is like me saying I don't like sweet things and mm -hmm. saying this tastes like sweet tea. It's like the taste of sweet tea without the sugary, saccharine taste. So like 
unsweet tea? No, but sweet. <laughs> no, it it's hard to describe. Like unsweet Lipton tea? No, because it tastes this. I there is sweetness there, but mm-hmm. it's not like sh- syrupy, sugary sweet that sometimes I can feel like gotcha. bourbon can be. Yeah. That makes sense. The I, sweetness is more tempered. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's not as heavy feeling. It's a very like light on the palate and kind of just goes away. Yeah. But I, I find this to smell really good and taste really good. Yeah. So again, this is this definitely is your journey. Yeah. And I actually didn't want to put Sazerac on the list because this is a bottle that can be a little difficult to find. Mm-hmm. Both This is a $25 bottle. This is more like a $30 bottle but it can be very difficult to find. This one you can find on the shelf. Easily, yeah, easily. All these can be very easily found, except for this one. And ultimately, I thought including it was fine because even though it is a more difficult to find rye, it does pop up if you visit one or two stores and you if you don't see it on the floor, if you just ask about it, mm. you can get your hands on one of these pretty easily for 30 bucks as long as you're willing to just ask a sales clerk or ask the spirits manager at your local liquor store or or one or two of your local liquor stores and if if you want to try this stuff you know ask about it with any level of frequency and if they start remembering that you're always asking Mm -hmm. about sazerac rye you're very likely to get one yeah and i do prefer the flavor profile of this it's a really well balanced flavor i feel like as well and i think if you're someone who if you're watching this channel because you're more of a bourbon nerd i think if you want to dabble in rye and you do tend to prefer lower proof things i think this is a good stop along the way to to experience Mm -hmm. but i think the next two options we have are much better for the bourbon drinker. All right. Let's so get into I'm going to let you talk about this one. Old Forester. It's a hundred proof. I think this is actually the first stop on the rye train for anybody who doesn't know whether they like rye or not. While these do step up and this is your journey, mm-hmm. I think this is such a balanced rye. And your favorite thing about this is that it's very readily available mm-hmm. and it's also the very cheapest rye on the table. <laughs> budget friendly. Yeah. So if you are looking for a good starter rye that's easy on the wallet, I will agree this is a good one. Yeah. And it tastes great. It's it's sweeter in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. but it still has a lot of the classic rye notes mm-hmm. at 100 proof you would think it might be a little bit stronger and it certainly does pack a little bit more flavor than these two, mm-hmm. which I like. I like that extra flavor, but it's it's not gonna bowl you over with heat or proof. It's not gonna burn your palate up. It's just a really, really good classic rye. Mm-hmm. It goes great in cocktails. I mean, all, all these ryes go great in cocktails. That's kind of rye's hallmark yeah. in the bartender world is that it's so good in cocktails. But this is a rye that I, as a bourbon fan, could sip all by itself. And you do really like this as well. Mm -hmm. So, and if the proof is too much for you, like I said, add a cap full of water, put it over ice, Mm -hmm. mix it into a cocktail. Mm -hmm. At being the cheapest on here and the fact that you get more proof and more flavor that you can then bring down a little bit with water if you need to. I think this is actually the best value on the table, even though it's not my favorite ride that we're gonna talk about. Mm It is the best value on the table, I think. So a very, very great beginner friendly option here. Okay. Now we're going to talk about what is my current go-to. And what I'm drinking. And what you're drinking. I started with Bullet and that was my go-to for a long time. And it still is. If I don't have what I'm about to to show, I would probably pick Bullet or Sazerac. Let's be honest. These two are kind of my go-tos as well. But this is my newest go-to, which is Mm -hmm. delicious. And it is Rittenhouse Bottled and Bond, 100 proof. And I like this with just a few drops of water to kind of open it up. And to me, what it does is it tastes very similar to Sazerac, but more balanced and just more approachable. Yeah. If that makes sense. I find this to have a lot more flavor yeah, than, yeah, than it's, everything it's, else on the it's table. It's more balanced. And that's, I guess that's what I meant. Yeah. It has all the flavors, but it's not like, whoa, going to like blow you over with flavors if you no. put a little bit of that water in there. Yeah, this is a fantastic product. Mm-hmm. I was actually extremely surprised when I tried this. This was the first rye I ever tried that I really liked. And I will drink this neat. Mm-hmm. And I, you do like it with a little bit of water Just in it. a little it bit. Because for you, you've mentioned that this can come off very astringent on the nose. Mm-hmm. 
but not on the palate. No. At 100 proof, it doesn't it doesn't attack your palate, mm -mm. but it is a little astringent on the nose for you. So you like this with a little bit of water in it. Mm. I like it with water or I like it just completely neat. It's a great pour, tons of flavor, $30 bottle, costs just as much as Sazerac, and I like it a ton better. This is a this is a wonderful bottle. This yeah. is my favorite 100 proof rye. One of the few rides that I will just grab and have a pour of. Yeah. So would you say as a more of a bourbon, like a straight up bourbon guy, these two would be the ones that you would probably pick over these two? Absolutely. Okay. I would use as a bourbon guy, I would use these for cocktails mm -hmm. and I would use these for cocktails or neat. Mm -hmm. So for me and wanting to be a wise consumer, mm -hmm. I would just buy these two okay. and use them for cocktails. I would not buy these. Now, we do buy these because you do like them. I do, yeah. And there's also, you have a lot of nostalgia with, with Bullet Rye. Yeah, well, just because it was like, it's the rye that, it and was it, it was my it was my first rye. And it's fantastic for cocktails yeah. as well. So yeah. I, do, I do like having a bottle of Bullet Rye around, yeah. but these are definitely more my wheelhouse yeah. as, so, a, as a bourbon drinker. As opposed to your, uh, the one that we did, the bourbon, the five bourbon, mm -hmm. um, beginner bourbons, that was like more of a journey start at one and go to five. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like choose your own adventure. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> there's really an order. Like if you if you know you like bourbon, you like that sweetness, but you want to try rye, maybe stick with one of these two or possibly the one we're about to show. If you don't like the sweetness of bourbon as much, or if that's something you're like, oh, it's so sweet, maybe try one of these two. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. I think that's a great point. Let's get into the last one. Okay. If anything on this list is, is on is, here for me, this is for me. <laughs> I'll let you talk about this one. You could announce it. So this is Pikesville Rye. As we're stepping up in somewhat in price, 25, 30, 22, 30, this is a $50 bottle. All right. But of course, that's your favorite one. Just like in our, well, and it's also the highest proof at 110 proof. Oh, 110 proof, yeah, yeah. But just like in our five beginner friendly bourbons video, where we ended that video with a higher proof option after you've worked your way through the first four mm -hmm. and you maybe want to experience what the spirit can be like mm. turned up a little bit with a little bit more of a full flavor experience, I think you cannot go wrong with Pikesville. Now, the very interesting thing is, the distillery that makes Rittenhouse also makes Pikesville. It's Heaven Hill. These are the exact same recipe. Okay. This is just 10 proof points higher and a little older. Gotcha. So it, it, it does change the flavor profile quite a bit mm -hmm. compared to yeah. Rittenhouse, but there are a lot of similarities there too. So if you actually try Rittenhouse for $30 and you really like it, but maybe you want a little bit more proof, a little bit more oomph, mm -hmm. which I like a little bit of oomph, little oomph, then this is going to be your next stop. As a bourbon drinker, this is the rye on the table that actually gets me excited to drink it. Mm -hmm. Like I will, I will absolutely look forward to having a pour of this. It's not quite as sweet as bourbon. Yeah. It's, I don't find it to be quite as complex as a good bourbon, but it is way better than a lot of average and even very good bourbons on the market. That's, that's high praise. It, it's a great, great pour. You can't go wrong. I remember the first time I had it, the 110 proof with the rye spice yeah. from the rye grain mm -hmm. took me back a little bit. Like it's got some kick, mm -hmm. but it is very balanced. A lot of people talk about things that are smooth or not smooth, and you can have a 110 proof whiskey that has some balance to it that is more approachable on the palate than a out of balance, poorly crafted mm. 80 proof whiskey yep. that is really sharp and spiky and tastes very alcoholic and very mm. astringent. They did a great job with Pikesville. I'm a huge fan of this. I know you're a huge fan of these. I live right here and you enjoy more of this mm -hmm. realm, but I think all five of these are excellent options yeah. for the beginner rye whiskey enthusiast. I agree. Good list. Good job. Thanks. All right. That's it for this week, guys. Hope you guys really like this list. Hope you found it enjoyable, yeah. especially if you're a bourbon drinker looking to get into rye yeah. or if you've had a rye that you really like and you want to try this. And if there's something that we didn't put on this list that you think is a great beginner friendly rye, put that in the comments below. Yes, because I will try it. Yeah, she'll try it, so which means I'll buy it. <laughs> and also it helps your fellow whiskey enthusiasts yeah. out there who are looking through the comments, yeah. looking at potential things. So we'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this. Let's get into other stuff. Yeah. 
I, you got some other stuff today? Well, I think we have some other stuff. Our other stuff this week is murder podcast. Oh, yeah. You, you so we were talking about what we were going to do for other stuff for this week's video podcast episode. Yeah. And I listened to a podcast series called The Pike Town Massacre. It was fascinating. It's very much a whodunit, yeah. a good classic whodunit. Mm -hmm. This thing is wild. It's about like the one of the biggest mass murders in Ohio history. Essentially in one night and, and almost an entire family got taken out. There's just, that's the starting point of yeah. what happened. And then there's all these twists and turns as any good storytelling would have. Yeah. But it is fascinating. It's it's gripping stuff. If you have listened to Serial, if you're a podcast person, mm -hmm. if you listen to Serial or S Town, both of those are fantastic yes. podcasts. And if you haven't listened to those, those are good ones. Absolutely listen to both of those. Yep. This is definitely in that same vein. Yeah. And I'd highly recommend checking it out. I don't want to give anything away. Yeah. It's it's fascinating. It's worth every bit of your listening it's time. good it's a good one i have not finished it i have you to started admit it. i started it i have very limited podcast listening time um because i can't listen while i'm at my job i actually have to pay attention so i only listen to podcasts like when i'm getting ready so if i have time to listen to a podcast it's going to be my favorite murder which is a true crime comedy podcast which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense but if you've listened to it before you you know you know what i mean yeah murder's hilarious right yeah no it's not the murder's <laughs> hilarious it's the two the two hosts are comedians uh, so yeah. that's how they like coped with stuff in their life and so they they riff off each other and their banter is really funny and it did take me a while to get into it because they have banter and i wasn't into them personally but after listening to a few episodes you get into it and their banter makes me laugh and then they talk about like a murder that you know yeah. some of them are unsolved some of them are solved so yeah. it's interesting to me who would watch or listen to something where two people are bantering back and forth back and forth with a some secondary topic like I don't murder or whiskey or crazy something people. like that <laughs> so anyways guys that's our other stuff for yeah. this week the links will be down below for, for all the things we talked about for my favorite murder and for cereal for cereal oh well, yeah we'll put cereal in there let's put cereal and s town in there and but the pike town massacre mm -hmm. i think if you're starting with it you could even skip cereal and s town laid the foundation for these types of podcasts mm -hmm. but you can skip both of those and go straight to pike town massacre fascinating stuff so we'll put those links below and you guys have our our five here. We'd love yep. to hear from you. Yeah. Take us out of here. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, this is one that's really near and dear to my heart. So if you liked this video, please like it. Like if you actually liked it, then thumbs up that video. Like it. Like it. That It's over there. Do it. Also subscribe to our channel if you'd like to keep seeing our content. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate you taking the time to watch today's video. Thanks, guys. Till next time. Cheers. Cheers.